century, the largest question facing mankind is the environment. Every year, there is an increasing need for effective solutions. Cleaner emissions, alternative fuels, toxic cleanup, and especially solid waste disposal. The fact is, in America alone, landfills are reaching capacity at an alarmingly quick rate. Of course, more landfills can be created, but for how long? And where? It's a huge problem. But for engineers, municipalities, counties, and business people, it could also be a huge opportunity. An environmental disaster of criminal proportions. Millions of automobile tires feeding a fire that has been burning now for nine days, spewing noxious fumes and toxic chemicals, producing an oily ooze that makes fighting the blaze a nightmare. Hundreds have been forced to flee their homes, and it may not be over for months. Here's an interesting piece of trivia that is relevant to our subject tonight. The energy from burning one automobile tire is sufficient to heat one home for one day. When you consider that we have stockpiled between two and three billion used tires in this country, and that we are discarding approximately 280 million more every year, there is a certain compelling logic to using those tires protectively or productively. For the most part, however, we don't. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That biblical prophecy holds true for most things. Most things in a landfill, at least. But not tires. A tire is a tire, and will be for hundreds of years. It won't decay. It won't stay buried. But it will catch fire, due to lightning, or as in the case of the Canadian catastrophe covered by ABC's Nightline, the result of arson. This fire is clearly a symbol of the problems we have in North America generally with stockpiling tires and not putting them immediately into recycling programs. And number two is that the oil that is the inevitable runoff from the meltdown from these uh, tires is going to go into Lake Erie. Used tires are a real problem. And the fact is most people do not want to buy retreaded tires. They're just not a hot item on the consumer market. There are other things that tires can be shredded and chipped that can be mixed with asphalt, used with rubberized asphalt on the road. But the market is just not big enough to absorb all the tires that we as a society wear out every year. And these piles, some with millions of used and unusable tires, aren't confined to Canada. There are no national registries of tire piles, but there are literally thousands of those and literally thousands of ideas on what to do with them. From fishnets, to carpet backing, to hockey pucks. The processes currently existent to convert tires into such products, however, are simply unacceptable and unprofitable. Incineration, subjecting tires to direct and controlled flame, results in the generation of energy in the form of heat. But there's a heavy price for this single benefit. In fact, incineration of, of any hazardous waste, and tires are hazardous waste when they're incinerated, generate emissions much like the emissions that are generated at this fire. And if we were burning all the, tox all the tires uh, that are stockpiled right now, we'd be probably generating far more contamination than this fire is right now. People don't want incineration of waste. People want waste to, waste to be reused and recycled. And in the case of tires, there's a whole range of things that can be done. Now, a unique machine using a method called pyrolysis is changing that. Designed by Charles Letford, chief engineer of EcoSquared, a Florida company, this machine, a reactor, completely recycles tires, but it does it with no harmful emissions or byproducts. Oil, carbon black, and steel are all marketable byproducts of the process. Surprisingly, the process is not complicated. First, Tires are shredded into very small pieces. Steel and fiber are removed and the pieces are fed into a hopper and moved by conveyor belt to another hopper located inside the processing plant. Next, the small rubber pieces are fed into a heated stainless steel tube which maintains a vacuum. The rubber is heated anaerobically without oxygen and turned into vapor. The vapor is drawn into a distillation tower and distilled into oil. The oil then serves as a catalyst for distilling more of the vapor. The oil itself is essentially number two diesel fuel, which is then drawn off to outside storage tanks for later use. 
During the distillation process, methane gas is drawn to the top of the tower by a fan and is pumped to an outside storage facility. It is then used to fuel the reactor or to generate electricity to be used on the premises. At the end of the reactor, another byproduct, carbon black, is produced. It's moved into a holding tank by screw conveyors and then containerized for shipping and further use in many applications. For example, tires, asphalt, rubber mats, and ink. Best of all, there are no harmful emissions from this process, and the process can be fueled entirely by itself. All it needs is old tires. Fortunately, there are three billion of them in our country alone. There is, in fact, a market for a reactor in every city and county, and also in many other industries. This process is, without a doubt, one of the best environmental opportunities now and for the future. For a nation that's beginning to pride itself on recycling, Americans are doing a lousy job of reusing old tires. CNN Sean Caleb's explains. Every American, each year, sends one old tire to the landfill. Richard Lalka sees 6,000 of them each day here at the L.A. County dump. And he is tired of grinding up tires that no one wants to buy. He's keeping his eye out for a way, any way, to reuse old tires. We're excited about anything that would get a tire out of Pointy Hills landfill. Across the street from the dump, Texaco's Alternative Energy Lab is working on a solution. Tires are made from petroleum. Texaco has developed a high-tech method to milk crude from worn-out tires. Assuming that you're talking about, let's take a round number, 5 billion tires sitting in landfills, that's the equivalent of 240 million barrels of oil sitting in landfills. This gasifier first extracts a crude oil, and in a second step, a fuel similar to natural gas. Texaco says the technology is efficient and clean, but not yet ready for the market. That means they won't be buying and recycling tires for years. Earth environmental activists came to town exposing what they call an immoral and illegal scheme. Members of Greenpeace scaled a mountain of shredded tires at the Port of Houston trying to drive home their point. The protesters say 25 tons of old tires may be shipped to Honduras and burned, releasing dangerous amount of poisonous substances into the air. Greenpeace says this tire recycling companies that want to export the tires would be breaking several laws. The citizens of Texas, the taxpayers of Texas, are supporting this illegal and immoral dumping through a $2 per tire tax on the sale of all new tires. This tax is supposed to fund a tire recycling program, which will look for legitimate ways to recycle these wastes and put them to other uses that do not involve dumping on other countries. And Greenpeace is asking state and federal governments to intervene. 